Welcome to the Financial Claims webinar. This is a part of a series of tutorials looking at the financial claims process and evidence requirements for the ATI programme. This tutorial will be looking at salaries and the evidence required to support this as a staff cost. So if we look at staff costs claimed on the programme, they are either fully funded or hourly rate and this is explained in more detail in the separate staff costs tutorial. In both instances, for calculating actual cost and hourly rate, we use the gross salary plus the employer pension contribution plus the employer national insurance contribution. This information is normally found in various documents and that includes individual pay slips, the organisation's payroll summary and the organisation's pensions list. From these documents, it's fairly straightforward to calculate the staff costs. However, from an audit point of view, the evidence doesn't stop there. In order to validate these costs, the auditors want to see a clear trail of evidence from the staff member's individual employer pension and national insurance contribution through to the total organisation's pension and national insurance payment. In this tutorial, I'll be going through the evidence requirements for the salaries element, which makes up the staff costs. The pensions and the HMRC are covered in separate tutorials. If we look at the salaries and the evidence required, here we have the staff member working on ATI. The evidence will be different depending on the type of payroll system operating within the organisation. For some organisations who pay their staff directly, their pay slips provide sufficient evidence. On the pay slip, we will see their gross salary and net salary. The net salary is the amount of staff member gets paid and therefore the amount we require to see as defrayal evidence. The following is an example just to illustrate. Here we have two pay slips from Atlanta Enterprise. We can clearly see the net salaries for each. Miss S. O'Hara being paid £792.65 and A. Wilkes being paid £339. As these staff members are paid directly, we would expect to see them as separate payments on the bank statement. Here is the bank statement and separate payments for A. Wilkes and S. O'Hara. They correspond with the amounts on the pay slips and that would complete the evidence for salaries. So going back to the main slide, most organisations don't pay their staff members directly. Instead, they have a payroll system whereby employee salaries are aggregated into one bank payment. The evidence required in this case would be the payroll summary, which lists the individuals included within the aggregate and the bank statement showing the defrayal of the total salaries paid. This is an example to illustrate. Here we have Tyrell Limited's payment summary showing the list of employees with just the names of the ATI staff left visible. We can see the net pay for each staff member and that's highlighted in green along with the total net salaries for the whole of Tyrell Limited which comes to £28,192.21. This is the figure we would expect to see as the defrayal. If we look at the bank statement for Tyrell Limited, we do indeed see that £28,192.21 has defrayed on the 31st of May. And that would complete the evidence for salaries. If we go back to the main slide, as a final point, please note if there are any discrepancies between the figures, an explanation will be required. If, for instance, the total on the payroll summary doesn't match the total defrayed, then we would need an explanation as to why that's the case. That completes the tutorial for salaries. You may now want to view the pensions and HMRC tutorial. If you would like further clarification on any of these topics, please contact us at your consortium. Thank you for watching.